Hello and welcome to Life Questions, a program dedicated to your viewer questions about life. I'm Bill Harris, your host. You know, there are so many questions and concerns about life these days as reflected in the viewer letters to us from uh, here at uh, TV44 from you. We have asked a group of local ministers to carefully review and research your questions for biblical answers. And guess what? They are here with us today to share their findings. I'd like to introduce them to you at this time. First off, we have Pastor Greg Fox of New Hope United Methodist Church in Rawson and also the Bluffton Trinity United Methodist Church. Next, Pastor Darwin uh, Dunton of the Mount Haber Church of God in Salina, Ohio. Next, we have Pastor Dave Burkhardt of Westminster United Methodist. And rounding off our panel today is a new gentleman with us today is uh, Pastor Stead. Pastor Scott Stead, Steed, is it Pastor Scott Steed, I'm sorry, of the Christian Cross Church in Elida, Ohio. We're happy to have you with us today. Great, great. You know, I think one question that will, that will resonate with the viewers real quick is the question that we received from a parent asking this. She says, I raised my children to know and love the Lord, but they have chosen their own paths. That sounds like life, doesn't it? Right there. I am brokenhearted as a parent and want them to come back to Christ. I am trying to keep hope that my children will return to faith in God, but it's hard to watch their actions. What is a parent to do about that, gentlemen? Pastor Dunton, you, 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 <laughs> you smiling like you've got the answer. I got the answer, yeah. <laughs> um, I actually, uh, in the summertime, we have a series in our church entitled, uh, You Ask For It. And what we do is I send out questionnaires and then the congregation asks questions and then in the summertime I do sermons on it. And this is actually one of them. And so it tells me that this person is not alone. Uh, this is not ab uh, unusual. It's not abnormal. And uh, so, um, so we actually spent a couple, couple Sundays just on that, that, uh, that subject. And so what do you do? Well, um, I always go to the prodigal son as an example. Here you have the father that loved his son, and then eventually the son left, and, and the father stayed. He didn't go out, at, but he kept looking for the son. And so he, uh, he, he stayed, and he didn't, uh, he, he didn't um, encourage that behavior. He didn't, and he didn't um, uh, subsidize that behavior or anything like that. I think one of the things that we're dealing with in our, in our society now are the amount of parents who are subsidizing or overlooking this behavior. So what I told my people is this, okay, first of all, develop a firm foundation with your children. Uh, and that's, that's a beforehand thing. Always develop that firm foundation in Jesus Christ. Um, and when they leave, um, you still have the house there to to support and encourage them back to Christ. Now mm -hmm. I'm not saying nag them. Right. Uh, you right. nag them, they're just going to dig their heels in. But um, but I think you have the right to go up to them and say, listen, you know as well as I do, what you're doing with your girlfriend is wrong. It's not biblical. But we love each other. Or or uh, the best one is is oh we can't afford not to. That that's what they're using hmm. now. Um, uh, we, I had a, uh, a gal come to my office one time, and that's what she said. I can't afford not to live with him. I said, I looked at her, and I said, I'll tell you what, the church will pay for your hotel room until you get married. Mm. And she, then the truth came out. Okay. Uh, so pray for them. I think you have the right to tell them, but don't nag them. Uh, the other one is um, um, don't subsidize what they're doing. Okay, so I'm living together with my girlfriend. We're not married. Why are you paying for their apartment? Mm. So. Don't. Stop that. And usually they've got this, uh, the grandchildren are there, so you always want to do that and everything else. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but you, know, s s you want them to hit rock bottom because when they hit rock bottom is usually when they start looking up. And right now, we have a tendency in our society to take away all the consequences of, of behavior from our, from our children because we don't want them, we want them to like us. Well, guess what? I'm your parent. My job is not for you to like me. My job is to be the parent. Yeah. And <laughs> That sounds very harsh. <laughs> well, 
And so, uh, I mean, I, I'll give you another example. My children, I got three children, two girls and a boy. And yeah, uh, I had hair until my son was born. I'm just letting you know that. He pulled my hair out. However, um, we made it very clear from day one, appropriately, what we expected out of them. And I remember, I used to live in Finley, and there was a two-mile two block that we would walk, and I would walk with my son and my daughters, and I always tell, tell them this. I said, I just want to let you know, we expect you to follow biblical mandates, biblical guidelines for dating and everything else. And by the way, I also met with the boyfriend, too. Yeah. I called it shotgun talk. I literally had a shotgun, and I was cleaning it in front of him. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, <laughs> you are serious. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, well, you are dating my most precious possession, you will treat her well. And it was bad when the one boyfriend said, yeah, you got a 16 gauge yeah. shotgun. <laughs> but anyway, but I told him this, I said, the more you compromise before the wedding, the more we're going to compromise at the ceremony. You mean in terms of finance? Finances? So okay. we, you stay pure, you stay out of the home, we will do our best to give you the best wedding you ever have. But the more you compromise, the more uh, we will compromise the wedding to the point where I will meet you on the courthouse square and I will do the ceremony okay. there. Let's get some other responses. Yeah. I, I think one of the things that we have to remember here is the book of Deuteronomy tells us clearly that if we train up a child in the way they should go, that, that when they get older, they will not depart from it. And the problem is there are too many parents that have left biblical teachings and do not train up the child in the way they're to go. And then we want to complain about it and say, why did they leave the church? But that's not the end of it, folks, because the fact of it is that even if we make mistakes rearing our children, we can make a difference in their lives if we begin to demonstrate the Christian principles that we all need to follow and, and encourage them to come back to it. Um, so many times uh, I, see, I see parents who, who come to Christ later in life and, and then realize I did wrong when I was a parent. So, so what can we do? And, and I tell them, pray. Pray for these people. Uh, pray without ceasing. And, and I've seen parents who did that, mm -hmm. whose children eventually did come back to the Lord. Mm. Um, so, so that would be my first recommendation is pray for these kids every single day. Um, you know, I, it, what really strikes me when you read this question is this person tells us they've raised their children to know and love the Lord. Mm -hmm. All people, all kids, I don't care how strong their faith is, rebel at some point. Um, I'm sure everyone around this table, myself included, yep. took a time where it's like, hey, I'm doing my own thing. I'm, yeah. I'm not doing this. Yeah. But we have to have faith in the fact that good Lord tells us to, to be diligent in our upbringing of our kids, do the best we can. And we have to rest assured that we know in our hearts. You know, my folks used to drag me to church. You didn't have a choice. You had to go. And, and that makes you want to rebel. But you know what? Some of that stuff sinks in. Sure. And eventually, if you've had that upbringing, you've had that base to go by, and, and it sounds like this person has done their due diligence and tried to keep their children in the church, It'll come back. They will realize where it's at and what they are to do. So don't be discouraged. But like he said, pray for them. Okay. One thing is, as a father of five, uh, uh, five young kids that are growing up now, uh, it, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 55 and 11, he said, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. I always tell my people to remember that, yeah, your child may rebel, they may go their own way, they may do their own thing, they're going to, I did, but the word of God will not fail. It will not fall to the ground. Not one letter of God's word will fall to the ground, and it will follow them all the days of their life. I believe that, I, I know, from personal experience doing things I shouldn't have done. And you hear that small, still voice in the back of your head saying, this is not my plan for you, this is not. So I always tell my children, and I, always, and I think they get annoyed with it, but I'm not gonna, you're, when I go, I'm not gonna leave you millions of dollars. You know, I'm not. If I get a million dollars, I'm gonna spend it while I'm here. 
but I'm going to leave you the foundation that will never fail you, and that's God's word. Mm -hmm. My children will never, at the end of the day, be able to say they didn't know God's word, and I truly believe that God's word will not fail. It will accomplish in their life at some point in time, will accomplish where we send it to. Now, all this has to also keep in mind the fact that God put into all of us a will of our own. And of course, we make that decision. And, and even with our prayers, God will not go over the decision of that person that we're praying for. But I do believe, in line with what you're saying, that God can orchestrate circumstances in their lives to bring them to the point of making a decision. I believe the brother brought up the prodigal son. Yeah, mm -hmm. hitting rock bottom, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Hitting rock bottom. That is so important. That is a nightmare rock. for parents, though. It is a nightmare. Sorry. Who yeah. loves to see their, their children laying in the pigsty? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was a pig farmer, so it's no big deal to me. But I'm just saying <laughs> that, uh, you know, who, who loves to see it? But we tend to take the consequences away from our children mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so much that they don't know what it feels like to live in the pigsty. Yeah. And um, I, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. Let them fall. Absolutely. Let them fall. I was sharing a little bit of, of a story about somebody from my last church. I'm not going to go in much detail. But the parents kept taking the consequences away from yeah. this guy. Yeah. And now uh, the parents aren't going to see him for at least 25 years. And, I'm, and I literally screamed at the parents, stop this, but we love them. And now they're not going to see him or touch him for 25 years. Oh. Okay, well, I, 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 did you want to add something? Well, it, just to lead in on that, it's difficult for parents nowadays to understand uh, what it means to be a good parent. And it, it doesn't always mean making your child happy. In fact, my goodness, uh, Kids are never going to be happy if we if we parent the way that we should. And not say never be happy, but but they're going to go through times when there's going to be sadness and there's going right. to be hurt and heartache. But hey, it's a part of growing up. Mm -hmm. um, experience it young so that you don't have to experience when you get older. Uh, but like like our brother said, you know we need to uh, we need to share with them the word of God and and do it as soon as possible. I got a three year old granddaughter that happens to be living with us right now that that um, she yeah. she is just like a sponge when you start reading the Bible mm -hmm. to her. And and I think, you know, she's not listening, but then she'll she'll look up and she'll say stuff like like the sword. And, you know, you, you can explain it a little better. It sinks in. In a nutshell, what should we say to the person that wrote this question? Then? What should they do? Number one, pray for them. Yeah. Yeah. Pray the, for them. At this phase, pray and let them go to the pig pen. Pray and let them go to the pen. Well, and we don't necessarily know that they're in the pig uh, pen, yeah, but let them. Yeah, you don't know the rest of the story, yeah. but I'm just saying, uh -huh, uh -huh. don't subsidize bad behavior. And you know, stop it, people. Because it only encourages more of it. it, it yeah. That, that Irresponsibility mean? always becomes someone else's responsibility. And, okay. and, and next, demonstrate. Demonstrate for them what the Christian life is to look like. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes we as parents, we don't demonstrate that very well. Absolutely. I know growing, when my kids were growing up, I didn't. Uh, now, uh, I try and do that the best I can. And so... I was, I was the perfect parent. So That's I'm awesome. Just, I'm just letting you know. That, <laughs> okay. That's nice to me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, just, okay. All right, well, listen, we're going we're gonna to take a break right now and come back in a few moments. And, and I want to address another question. Um, this is a person that is trying to convince a friend of theirs that even though they are a Christian, why would you want to decorate your home with uh, decorations of Buddha? Why do that? We'll, we'll see what you have to say about that question and more when we return. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. 
All right, we're back now, and uh, let's address that question that I mentioned to you earlier. It, uh, it is, um, well, let me just read it. I have a friend who is a Christian, but decorates her house with Buddhas, that is, I guess, statues, because she says they look cool, and they're, they're just for decoration. And then the lady asks, is this okay? What do you think? Well, first off, if you're a Christian, uh, I don't understand why we would get into the Buddha thing. Uh, I, I think it's opening the door for, um, for worshiping other gods. And in, even though she says they just look cool, um, that, that's a form of worship. And, and so is it okay? No, that's not, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. That's not okay. Anybody else? Well, the big thing is you got to remember, too, you are to not do anything that would make your brother fall. The Lord tells us that. And mm -hmm. if you look at this, she might think they're cool just for fun, but say your neighbor, your friend that comes over, and they're starting to dabble in other things and look at other religions, other ideas, and they, oh, well, Susie's got these Buddhas around her house. I'm going to look a little deeper into it. So she starts to find out what a Buddha is, what it means, what it represents, and starts to draw her away from the Lord. So in this case, she's helping make her help her brother stumble, where she really is not her intent, the way it mm -hmm, sounds. Mm -hmm. But on the same token, we are responsible for, our, you know, not causing our brothers to stumble. Absolutely. Can you imagine coming to my house and seeing all my wife's <laughs> old boyfriends on the on the wall, all the pictures of the old boyfriends? Can you imagine that? And you go, oh, that's so inappropriate. Well, I mean, what are you doing? We're not, we haven't even hit the demonic side of it. Go ahead, hit it. There's a demonic side to it. If it's not, a, if all fall, in my opinion, all false religions come from uh, the devil and they're demonic. Mm -hmm. So you have that as well. Um, so uh, would I do it? Nope, I would not. Have I ever had a Buddha? When I was a teenager, yeah, my uncle gave me one, and I think it ended up in the trash, to be honest with you. Uh, but... Um, not, no, I wouldn't. Because not only that, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says that we are Christ's ambassadors. We are Christ's ambassadors. And so everything that we do reflects on Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I, I, now, it's still up to the friend if they're going to do it. I mean, you can nag him to do And we are yeah. charged by the Lord to make sure that we, we have, uh, we represent ourselves as Christians. And we can't, we can't put something out there that goes completely against what we claim to be. So we're to be with like people. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor Steve? The Bible also tells us not to let our good be evil spoken of. You know, that goes back to what you say. People, you know, come to your house or are you a stumbling block to someone and cause them to fall or uh, fall into false religion or uh, false worship. I think anything that's putting the Buddha aside, but anything that we allow to take away from our relationship with Jesus Christ anything that we allow to come between us and God is sin. You know, whether it be hobbies or whether it be a uh, big thing. We, we have a 17 year old in our congregation that's uh, preaching now and he's in training and, uh, um, and, and is wanting to uh, step out into the ministry. Uh, and he just was talking about Sunday morning, how he's finding himself that he will allow video games to come, you know, and hit whether it, he wants to go pray, well, I'm playing this game, and he allows and puts those things, you know, before his time with God. I think anything that we allow to take away from our time with God becomes sin. Mm -hmm. Anything. You know, we look at the Hebrew people uh, as far back as, as the Exodus, and, and a consent. They, they would leave a, a, a small idol around, and, and that would draw them away from Christ. Sure. Um, they were told not to intermarry with other uh, that were people of a non-Jewish faith. And, yeah. and the reason was because they will draw you away from the Lord and have you worshiping other idols, other gods. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, if those things are around, they may seem like a small thing, but, but eventually it could come a, become a big thing. And so why even put that temptation out in front of yourself? Mm -hmm. You look at Achan. I go back to Achan's sin. Here's uh, Jericho and everything else. Oh, it's just a little idol. No big deal. No big deal. How many people died because of Achan's sin? And then it was his sons and his daughters and his wife. And, and we're not even talking about the army. That and so it affects others too. 
So it's something as simple as having a, a Buddha idol in your, a Buddha statue in your house could really be much more serious than one thinks at first blush. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What you're saying. That's what you're saying. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Let's move on then. Uh, another question, uh, viewer. This is an interesting one. I have an acquaintance who seems to go to a new church every <laughs> few years and then will return back to one of the previous ones a few, a few years later. This has been going on a few decades. Uh, she says, she always tells me that God is up to something. I just haven't figured out where I'm supposed to be yet. And then the viewer asks us this question, does the Bible say anything about church hopping? I understand that people change churches, but this practice seems excessive. You think? Is it excessive? That is definitely obsessive uh, or excessive <laughs> and maybe obsessive too. <laughs> you know, um, uh, I, I really sensed when I first read that question, I thought, boy, this person really has an uneasy spirit about them for some reason or another. And so, so if, if that was the case, um, I would really encourage them to examine their life and find out how deep their relation is with the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ because, because it seems like they're searching for something here that, that they haven't got. And, and the fact of it is, if, if they're in a church that's preaching the word, um, if, they're, if they're studying the word on their own, mm -hmm. then there's no reason to be jumping from church to church yeah. to church. Uh, especially if you, if you jump from one church to another and then eventually go back to the first church. Mm -hmm. uh, that just seemed really odd to yeah. me. So. Is there a negative impact, long-term effect of jumping from one church to another to another? Pastor Dunton, go ahead. Right yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it is. It, it, um, you are to be part of the body of Christ and you come in and you're part of that body. And mm -hmm. let's say you become the hand. Yeah, well, I'm going to yeah. leave. The hand is now gone. And uh, I tell you, another question that eventually needs to be talked about is, when is the right time to leave a church? And how should you leave a church if you're going to leave a church? Good questions, good questions. Uh, you're going to answer those? Because I'm going to tell you as a pastor, yeah. all of a sudden it's like, where's Jim? Congregation comes up and says, oh, he left. Really? Why'd he leave? We don't know. He went to the church that has a building project. Really? Well, Jim was doing this and this and this in the church, and now we've got to fill those holes. And so is it a sin? I cannot find a scripture that says it is a sin. But I will tell you, way back when all these churches were being established, it was one church in town. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't have the uh, Heinz 57 flavors that you went to. So it, it hurts. Yeah. And, and well, how should a person leave? What is the proper way you gotta to you got to talk leave? to the pastor. <laughs> what, 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 what is so hard about that? Oh, the pastor should come to me. No, that's not what the scripture, I'm pounding. Can you tell him? I, I, <laughs> yes, I can tell. 36 years of being a pastor, I've dealt with this in every church. And it's just like, no, do what the scriptures say. Because nine times out of ten, you misinterpreted what that pastor said. Nine times out of ten. If it's a question uh, of the person having left because of something yeah, that you perceived looked at me the pastor said. Yeah. Well, did you know that I ate a taco that day? I mean, it just... So, you know how okay. I feel. Yeah, <laughs> I know how you feel. Okay, again, how should a person leave the church? What should they this do? Comes down to our, this whole issue and this whole question comes down to our society. We are a feel-good society, okay? <laughs> and that's why our numbers are dropping in churches because uh, you know, we go to church because we want to hear the right thing. We want to hear what we want to hear <clears throat> instead of what the Lord wants us to hear. And, you know, I've coined a phrase quite a while back that I use quite a bit now. It's a little less of me and a little more he. And we need to spend more time with God. And when you go to church, you don't go to church to feel good. You go to church to spend time with God and honor Him mm -hmm. and hear what He has to say of why we're there. Yeah. Um, wouldn't be a leaving church issue. We wouldn't even have to answer that question if people spent more time with Him and less time about themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pastor Scott, you just planted a church, right? Yeah. Yeah. What would you have to say? What, what is, uh, what's the best way to leave a church? Uh, the rapture. <laughs> uh, amen. Okay, well, short of, short of the rapture, what would you say would be the way? Well, I think it, it, 
and it, it goes back to you know the, the, the brother said a little bit ago about people heaping to themselves the, t the those that'll tickle their ears and make them feel good uh, as a pastor, you're not always going to preach a shouting message. You're not always going to preach a message that people are going to walk out and say, man, you did a great, you know what I mean? There's going to be messages that are hard and messages that uh, are going to mess or till someone's sin patch. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to get it. You're, the message is going to get in there and it, the word of God is going to offend. The word of God is going to uh, uh, uproot those, they're supposed to uproot those things in our lives that aren't right. And if it's not, if, if you're going somewhere that you leave every single week feeling, man, I'm, you know, then you probably need to leave that church. Mm -hmm. That's probably not the church you should be at because we shouldn't always be patting people on the back. Now, I believe that you go to church, number one, to worship God, to praise God, to give glory to God. But it's also an opportunity for you to draw strength from one another. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We need each other. You know, the body, like he said, the hand needs the foot. The knee needs the eye. We need each other. Mm -hmm. And we, we're there to help and up, uplift and encourage one another to get through what we're going through. A couple of things quick before we run out of time here is, is uh, I almost felt like this person needs to be plugged into a ministry somewhere. Uh, maybe that's the problem why they keep jumping from church to church is they don't feel like they, they necessarily fit into a particular niche at the church. Um, so, so I would maybe see about getting them into a, uh, you know, some kind of an outreach ministry where mm -hmm. they can make a difference. So, um, so that's one thing. And then uh, I, I believe another is that, that if, we, if we don't stay put, it's difficult to have those, those close-knit relationships where we are the body of Christ. Uh, where we know each other's lives, where we can come to the aid and we can know specifically how to pray for you. And, and so, so it really, you know, to, to find that church home and to stay there, mm -hmm. um, I think it's a critical part of our, our spiritual journey. Okay. So. Well, thank you very much. And I think on that note, we'll, we'll end it there. Um, I certainly hope this has been a blessing to you and our uh, viewing audience. And uh, if you've enjoyed it, I'll tell you this. Next week, we're going to be joined by this fine group of pastors, and we'll be answering more of your questions. So you want to tune in again next week again at the same time. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for uh, your wisdom and your expertise, and I certainly hope and pray that it uh, plants seeds in the hearts of others. That's our program for today. We'll be back again next week at this same time. Until then, bye-bye for now. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at wtlw.com.